What is up, guys? This is the Sports Sir Brad Walker, and welcome inside the Sunshine State Sports Jabber. Welcome back, guys. Happy New Year to everyone. Hopefully, everyone is staying safe out there. Um, but again, guys, welcome uh, back. Um, as you can see, guys, if the screen is tilted a little bit, uh, I had some uh, my laptop cracked, and um, the screen has been tilted this way. Um, so I do apologize on that. I did get a green screen, guys, for the holidays. I did promise you guys that um, I will be um, I will be uh, getting a stand for that as well. Uh, I am supposed to be joined, guys, by former UF quarterback Shane Matthews uh, sometime this evening. He will be coming on uh, with me uh, either um, on the conference call or uh, on here as well. Um, I want to thank, you know, everyone last year uh, for helping grow this show. Um, it was awesome uh, with all that and, you know, my other show as well uh, on Thursday nights. Um, so I, you know, I'm, I'm happy to be back guys. I, I do, uh, appreciate everyone from last year and I'm hoping that this year would just be as strong or better. I'm going to do a little bit, uh, tightening up on some things myself to get, uh, everything, uh, you know, better for me and better for you guys. Okay. Uh, the Sunshine Shade Sports Jabber is part of NGSE Sports. Remember the website, guys. It's NGSEsports.com for all your current sports content. Also, guys, this show is sponsored by Arena Eats. Log on to ArenaEats.app for the ultimate fan experience. At your favorite sports venues, Arena Eats mobile app pre-order, express pickup, and in-seat delivery. How do you place your order? Like I said, guys, welcome in. Um, this. Uh, again, I will be uh, waiting if I can get Shane. Like I said, I'm waiting for him, either him to come on my, the conference call or he will be coming on here on StreamYard. Um, we will, uh, you know, definitely bring him back. Uh, if you do hear a noise in the background, guys, that is the conference call on my phone. Um, I have to use my phone to uh, that. So, so far I have, I'm going to, go ahead and silence that so far i have uh no one on here quite yet so i'll go ahead and wait um i hope everyone guys had a good new year uh mine was very good uh didn't do anything of course with everything going on with uh with covid you know it's kind of hard to go doing and stuff like that um but uh stayed safe um uh, you know uh there you know didn't do much. Watched games. Of course, I watched both of the uh, championship games with uh, Alabama and – actually, guys, I won't be joined by Shane until 8.45. Uh, but the Alabama-Notre uh, Dame game and the Clemson-Ohio State game, of course, none of those guys have anything to do with this show. Again, this is if you guys are joining me for the first time. This is a all sports Florida podcast. I talk just strictly Florida sports on this show. Um, guys, I have a YouTube page too that I always forget to mention to you guys. If you cannot catch the Sunshine State Sports Shabber or the Walker Report, it's an entirety while it's live. They are all posted on the Sports Nerd YouTube page. Head over there. They're all in its expiry. And if you guys do go over there, do me a favor, man. Hit the subscribe button and hit the like button. I mean, again, I'm you know, just a small, I'm just starting out on YouTube. So I'm hoping sometime within the month, guys, that I'm able to update my stream yard where I will be able to then go live on YouTube. And I'm going to go live on, are you ready for this? Not Twitch, guys. I am going live on, I am going to go live on another app that uh, was brought to my attention and that would be, hang on just a second, guys, because I have lost my train of thought here. That would be TikTok. Uh, I'm going to go live on TikTok when I upgrade that. It'll be the three, uh, it'll be the three, uh, 
the three platforms that I'll be coming live, it'll be Facebook, YouTube, and TikTok to go ahead and uh, start fresh on that platform because, guys, yeah, um, it's a new platform that I have not dove into. And I had uh, friends tell me that it is outstanding, that there are different uh, places out there and stuff like that on the platform. So that is one platform that I'm looking to get into. Like I said, guys, as you can still see behind me, I still have my USF and Lightning uh, pictures up. I again did get a green screen. Um, I will be getting a stand for it here soon. And then you will see different things. What I'm probably going to end up doing, guys, is as I go through my topics, I'm going to change the symbol behind me to then uh, utilize uh, that as well. Um, but yes, that is definitely an upgrade that I was looking for this year. Uh, another upgrade, guys, I'm going to get a new pair of speakers. My speakers are two years old, and I've dropped them on the crown one too many times. So I will be getting a new set of speakers this year as well uh, sometime this year. And I may have to get a new laptop now that my laptop is crooked. Uh, so I'm looking into getting something like that and upgrade that as well. Uh, this year, those are the things. Uh, nothing is changing on this show, guys. Now that I have a calling number, now um, I'm really excited, guys, because you know uh, Shane will be my first ever interview on this show. Uh, I should be getting him in about nine minutes, uh, but he will be the first ever interview on my show. So I'm interested to uh, definitely um, interview him. Uh, I have. Uh, about four questions that I want to ask him about what's going on. Guys, he's an awesome podcast as well. And I'll let him uh, give the information to all of you guys at the end. Uh, again, guys, uh, you know, the word, you know, last year as I'm waiting for Shane to come on, the word last year that I can use for 2020 is, guys, just be humble. You know, be humble for what you have. You know, don't don't take anything for granted. Don't take family for granted. Don't take friends for granted. Be humble. Um, I heard a YouTuber not long ago say that, you know, if you have friends and family, hug them because you never know when that last hug is going to be. Um, there's been a lot of people that have died in 2020 uh, from COVID and other things. So, again, guys, don't take anything for granted, man. You know, you got to um, you got to you can't take things for granted. And to be honest with you, I, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's very, very, uh, you know, fortunate enough to, um, to say, you know, what's going on. Uh, but again, guys, you know, you, you just, you have to be fortunate. You have to be humble. And that's what 2020 taught me to be humble. I, I'm happy with, um, you know, that I still have my job. I didn't lose my job. I, Worked all through last year. Uh, I was very, very lucky. Very, I shouldn't say lucky, guys. I hate using that word lucky. I'm going to say blessed. I was a blessed person a year ago. Um, I was, you know, blessed that no one in my family or my friends got COVID. Um, no one passed away uh, from it. Or, you know, I didn't have any deaths. I want to give the prayers out. Anyone who lost anything, that is a family member, your job, anything, car, whatever, you know, my prayers go out to you from NGSC, the sports for Brad Walker, and, you know, this show, you know, prayers to you. Uh, hope that, you know, in the future, you know, things can be better, uh, better for you. Hopefully 2021, which is not really off to a good start. I guess the news is that there's a new strain out there that's stronger. Obviously, we, I think we all kind of knew that was going to happen. But we have to continue, I guess, in, in, a, in a way to try to stay positive uh, on everything. And like I said, the word that I that I use last year, guys, is the word humble. And I, um, yeah, <laughs> I mean that that's the word of the of the day, guys. It's, it's just to stay humble. And uh, I'm looking forward to this. I'm hoping, guys, that we by the time the ball rolls around. We are able, again, to have spring ball this year in college football. That is, as of right now, it doesn't like it's going to happen, but let's hope in the next few months, maybe the end of this month or February, we have some better numbers and the numbers start going down with the vaccines that are being um, out there. I know uh, 
prayers out to the state of California. They're having all kinds of issues in California right now. So prayers out to that state entirely. I don't know if there's anyone in the state of California that listens to this show because, again, it's an all Florida sports uh, thing. But, uh, you know, if you guys do, I, I love everyone, no matter where you guys are, are, are calling into or calling from or even watching from. Um, you know, I had a guy on my Thursday show that, you know, uh, listens from Australia and he's a day ahead of us. So he called me and told me that he was on, it was already Friday in Australia. Um, so, you know, it, it's very interesting to get uh, different countries on here and stuff like that. You know, me speaking, you know, in retrospect, it's, it's pretty cool uh, with what has happened. Uh, you know, I got to go to, you know, there were five USF home games last year. I missed one due to me being on vacation. I went to three of them and missed one because of COVID related issues with the football team. The Navy game was postponed because of COVID. So, yeah. But I was very, very humble to get that. Unfortunately, I was unable to go to the Outback Bowl this year. Uh, that was something, guys, that I really, really enjoyed last year. Um, I will have to say out of all of the credential events that I've done, uh, that one was my favorite uh, by far so far. Uh, the East-West Shrine game was another one, guys, that was was pretty damn cool, too. Um, you know, being that it the game is representing Shriners Hospital for kids, uh, so that is awesome, too. And the fact you get to see those college kids play one last game before the – the, the combine before the draft. I don't know guys if they'll have that game this year. I don't know. Um, we'll have to wait and see uh, how that goes. I know they play the senior bowl as well. I don't know if those games will be going on. If they do have those games, I would say look for them to uh, look for them to be without fans or limited fans, which actually, to be honest with you, going to the East West shrine game a, a couple years ago, one of the coolest things I got to go to was the banquet the night before the game and got to sit with all the Shriners. That was cool to see all the people who donate their money and their time to help kids and how cool it was to meet all the players and meet their families and everything. Um, that was pretty cool, guys. I'll be dead honest with you. That was pretty cool. Um, to see, to see that happen, um, to see that happen. Um, but you know, I'll be honest with you. If that happens this year, great. Um, if it doesn't happen, you know, that's fine too. As I, as I say, you know, to me, um, you know, I, I, I relish the opportunities that I get guys. I mean, plain and simple, you know, I, I relish, you know, the chances that I get. Like I said, I got to sit, you know, in the press box uh, for USF football this year. It was very different uh, from the first two years. Uh, obviously, with COVID, we had to wear a mask the entire time. Um, the uh, the article, guys, if you want to read, actually, I wrote an article for IROC Media, who I got the credentials through. Uh, head on over to the website, guys. It's it's uh, I R O and iqmedia.com head over there and you know go to college ncaa football uh, the article or you can if you can search by authors you can search my name bradley walker and that is one of the articles i have uh, uh, wrote recently and uh that i wrote recently and uh yeah it is uh it is pretty damn cool uh that i got um that i got to uh write an article and in that article it lists all of the differences from the first two years of being a USF credential member. Uh, one of the biggest things guys is, and one of the things that I enjoyed uh, most about being a media member was um, being able to go down to the field uh, before the game. Uh, I would go down there and take photos and do, you know, do a Facebook live chat from the field and couldn't do that this year because they don't want anybody else down there. Uh, that can spread the virus. So there was none of that. Um, you know, we were fed 
like on like banquet type style food that turned into a box to lunch. Uh, we got used to be able to get fountain coke and drinks out of a out of a fountain that you would get at your McDonald's or at a uh, gas station. Uh, it was cans handed to us, can, uh, bottles of water. Um, so again, guys, this it's a completely different scenario um, from completely different scenario this year than it was um, uh, last year, you know, and stuff like that. So, you know, to me personally, it, 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 it was definitely eye opening and I'm kind of hoping this year that we go back um, to the old way again, if that doesn't happen, that's okay too. Um, I hope that we play high tech conference games uh, because speaking of Mr. Matthews, the Florida Gators will be here on Saturday, September 11th at Raymond James Stadium to play the USF Bulls. And that will be a tough game for me, guys. I, I, I will flat out admit that's going to be a tough football game. Um, I was brought up as a Gator fan. I bleed blue and orange, but the green and gold of USF has mixed in with that. And uh, it's going to be tough. If, if, if I get credentials, it will be my fourth year. For I Rock Media covering USF football, um, which to me will be pretty damn cool. Um, it looks like, guys, I may have Matt on the line. Hang on just a second, guys. I'm going to bring him on here. Let's see. Okay. Matt, are you there? Oh, that's right, Shane. Are you there? Okay, thank you very much. Guys, this, I just want to say this. Uh, I now have a uh, former UF. Gator quarterback Shane Matthews on the line. Shane, thank you for joining me this evening. No problem. Uh, I just, you know, I got a couple questions I wanted to ask you uh, while I have you on here. Um, what were your thoughts on how the, the Gators season ended this year? Well, it was obviously disappointing. It was a three straight game. Uh, you know, a lot of Do you, do you think, Shane, that it had a lot to do with the players that uh, opted out to go to the draft? Do you think that that played a big factor into it? You're referring to the cotton bowl? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, he's not even really the starter to hurt, but, you know, there's, there's a lot of other teams. Uh, he's looking at North Carolina. He's going to opt out. Uh, pretty much everything is going to opt out. He's going to opt out. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I, I watched some of the game, and uh, like right before you popped on here, I, I've been a Gator fan, Shane, since I was a baby. My late uncle uh, read me to be a Gator fan, um, and I've been a Gator, following the Gator since I was little. Um, so real quick, now, what is your opinion on the suspension looming over the university next year that Dan Mullen committed? Right, correct. Yeah, correct. What are, what are your thoughts on Emory Jones being the quarterback next year?
Okay. Okay. And I, I'm getting now. I'm going to go ahead and ask you uh, some questions about your your playing days. What was it like playing under Steve Sprague? And the last one I have for you is, uh, what was the best part about playing uh, for the University of Florida? Well, I always wanted to play kids. Uh, I've been fired up at every stadium or all of them. Um, and it was cool playing for the University of Florida. Uh, like I said, any time you play in the end, it's a deal. And to be able to play under for the uh well, yeah, I, I'm sorry. I, one last question. Was there any one chain in particular that you guys wanted to be every year? Being in the F, being that I think the SEC is the best conference in college football, being that I'm, I'm born and raised in the state of Florida, but who was the one team? Was it Georgia? Was it Florida State? Which team was it that you guys coming into every season wanted to be at the end of it when it was all said and done? Well, I don't know. Okay. All right, Shane. Um, like I said, I do appreciate you coming on here. You are my first guest on this show, so I appreciate you coming on. Is there anything you want to uh, – you can go ahead and talk about your podcast. I know you have a podcast that you do weekly, so go ahead and give my uh, my listeners the chance to give them the uh, information on that. Yeah, I have a favorite podcast. Live on Facebook. Um, you can always go back and watch it Well, thank you again, sir. I do appreciate you. Appreciate your time coming on here. Happy New Year to you and your family. Have a good night. Thank you, sir. All right, guys, that was, again, former uh, Florida Gator quarterback Shane Matthews. Thank you, sir, again for uh, hopping on and joining me this evening. That was pretty awesome uh, for him to take his time to come on. Uh, again, guys, I just want to say that that was the very first guest on this Monday show. Uh, that is freaking awesome. Thank you. Thank you again, Shane, for coming on and, and talking with me uh, about that. Um, yeah, guys, that's that's freaking awesome. I, I'm going to try, guys, to get uh, guests from USF, UCF, Florida State, Miami, the Rowdies. I'm going to try to get, try to get uh, guests lined up for this show. That was another thing that I'm going to try to push. This year, too, is also to get some more guests on both my shows. And Shane happened to be an exciting week. Uh, I will be on tomorrow night on Bullseye, and we get to interview Athletic Director Michael Kelly. I can't wait for that tomorrow night with uh, with Larry Frank. Uh, that's going to be cool, too. But it was kind of cool to interview you, Shane. That was awesome. Uh, guys, some Rowdy's news. Uh, defender Connor Anthony signed a two-year contract. Um, he had, he was defender of the year in 2019 when he played with the Tormenta FC. Um, according to the Rowdies, he started 26 games and scored six goals during the season. Oh, by the way, guys, they also reassigned goalkeeper Ian McGrain to a one year deal with a club option for 2022. So again, guys, all my Rowdies 
fans out there. This team seems to be coming back together again for this year. And that is pretty cool because this team was in the was in the championship game last year. Had it not been for COVID, we might have won the title. Seriously, the Rowdies, it's exciting, guys. All these guys are coming back to make another run, another run at, at this title. And I, 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 I hope to be along for the ride when they do this. Because, again, guys, if, if that's what's so cool about it is to be along for the ride is going to be interesting, to say the least. But, again, you know, the Rowdies, I, I will keep, keep going with them, guys. Um, keep moving forward with that. Um, but yes, that definitely, uh, will come into play, uh, down the road, but that is awesome, uh, that the Rowdies are getting all these guys back, uh, in the upcoming year. Again, guys, like I mentioned to you a couple shows before I took my week break for the new year that I'm going to narrow the non, uh, the sports that are not going on right now first. So you're going to hear what, so I'm going to talk baseball next. Because, again, the reason why I had Shane come on is I wanted to, you know, have him to open my show. I think, I think it's kind of cool to have the guests on early. Um, I noticed on my the, the show that I co-host with Larry Frank, he always has the guests on about an hour into the show. I like to have my guests on if I can right away. If they can't come on, then I'll say 9 o'clock. But uh, Shane was available to come on at a quarter till, so we got to take you care of um, so, again, I will go through the non, the ones that are not going on right now. So, right now, soccer and baseball are the, and hockey will be the next one I talk about. But hockey, guys, today is January 4th. We are nine days away from the start of the NHL season. So, the Tampa Bay Lightning will be defending their Stanley Cup. They come into there. They'll be lifting the banner on the 13th as they play the Chicago Blackhawks. At Emily Arena, I will go into more detail with that coming up. But we're going to talk first, guys, about the, the fish, the Miami Marlins down south in South Florida. Um, as of right now, Don Mattingly is the longest tenured manager for the Miami Marlins. Um, he, uh, again, if you do not know who he is during his playing career, he was the American League MVP in 1985, nine gold gloves during his 14 year career, mostly with starting first baseman with the New York Yankees. He had six consecutive uh, all-star uh, things as well. Now, he did take uh, – Mattingly was at the helm of the Dodgers franchise, and they kicked off a run of eight consecutive National League West titles. He was the manager there. He went winning the uh, first three from 13 to 2015. Uh, he eventually uh, winning with the New York Mets in 2015. He took them to the NLDS. They won – the, the, that the, and now he won manager of the year last year in the National League. This was the first time in a long time that you had both uh, Mattingly and skipper Kevin Cash, both managers from the same state, win AL and AL and NL MVPs. Or, I mean, sorry, AL and NL manager of the years. So that's how that went with that. Um, so now is it, what is the, the question is his contract is set to expire after this season, after the 2021 MLB season is over. Um, is he, does he see a rebuild going on here with the, Mar remember the Marlins have, they again had COVID last year, guys hit them. They still made the playoffs. So again, it, it's one of those things that, um, you know, that is just the way it is, guys. Um, but coming in, that that is, you know, that that's the way it, it, it all breaks down. And to me, um, it, 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 that's just the way it goes. Um, but we will have to wait and see uh, what the what they do. Um, a lot of people are projecting that the 2023 season will be when the Marlins will be a team to reckon with. Again, that's still two years away, guys. So what they're saying is that these guys, the Marlins are close, but they're not quite there yet. Again, this is a team that, again, made it to the postseason last year. So, And they have signed some veteran guys. Um, Left-handed pitcher Ross Dittweiler and catcher Sandy Leone um, both have signed deals. Uh, 
Rottweiler has signed an $850,000 one-year contract, and Leon has been signed to a minor league contract invitation. He, of course, uh, is a catcher. Uh, Detweiler, uh, he's 34 years of age, pitched in 16 games out of the bullpen for the White Sox last year in 2020. He was 1-1 one one with a 3.20 ERA in 44 innings. He broke into the majors in 2007 and has a 4.6 ERA in 44, I'm sorry, 224 games for seven teams. Uh, Detweiler earned a 100000 uh, in performance bonuses for games as a pitcher and fifty thousand dollars each for sixty and seventy games. Leon thirty one batted one thirty six in twenty five games last year for the Indians. He has a two point six career average in nine seasons with three teams. He was once with the Boston Red Sox um, as well. He did play for the Red Sox, who are of course the threat in the um, in the uh, East there. Um, but guys, I think I may have another guy. Hang on a second. Phil, can you hear me? Phil, are you there? Can you hear me? I can hear you now, sir. Yes, sir. How you doing, man? What's going on? I'm good, buddy. How are you? I'm hanging in there. Uh, it's been a good day, uh, here at the house. Got a lot of items in. Uh, got a Kyle Pitt. You can see in that little picture right there. Uh, it's a full size mini. I mean, full size uh, official helmet signed by Kyle Pitts. I'm extremely excited for that one. <laughs> yeah, I uh, like I, like I mentioned earlier in the chat with you. I think he's going to be one of the top tight ends that goes in the draft <laughs> in April. So yeah, um, yeah. I would say. I mean. Trying not to homer here, I would say I think he's the number one tight end in the draft, to be honest. Um, no. I, I, I see him top 15. I agree with you. You can homer on here if you want. <laughs> yeah, there you go. You know what I'm saying? Um, but, uh, you know, it, it's been hit between him and the Jordan kid from Miami. I mean, you can't you can't take away from that kid. He's good. Um, well, but uh, tight end for Notre Dame. He's a pretty good kid, too. I don't know if he's, a, if he's eligible for the draft. I don't know what the kid's name is. Uh, um, I'm not for sure. I haven't heard, uh, to be honest with you. Um, but I know when it comes to Pitts, man, he's a ma matchup nightmare. Uh, he keeps putting on any, if he puts on any more weight, I mean, dude, with the hands that he has, uh, the blocking abilities that he picked up in the off season, I was really surprised, dude, Emory Jones, Kyle Pitts, and, um, I want to say Tony went up there too, went to a training camp that was just outside of Athens. A lot of people were freaking out. They were like, oh, are they transferring? No. Um, there was a, a coach up there that worked with Emory when uh, he was in high school. And apparently, dude, whoever this guy is, sign him immediately because the improvement that I saw in, in, in Pitts and the improvement that I saw in Tony, especially Tony, Tony was always electric, uh, but what we saw out of Tony this year was Tony turned into a, a pure wide receiver, uh, right. running routes, uh, making catches. And, yeah, I mean, of course, he's one of the most electric people I've ever seen when it comes to him carrying the ball. But uh, we really got to see Tony turn into an actual wide receiver this year um, because I'll be honest with you, I didn't see him going into the draft before this year. And now all of a sudden, you know, he's, I, I mean, I don't want to say, I don't know if I can say first round, but I'd say, you know, beginning of the second round. I mean, any team that wants to have a special teams guy that can like make something happen at any time, you know, they're going to pick up Tony. So I, I hope the Redskins pick him up to be on, or well, not, not Redskins. I'm sorry. Washington football team. <laughs> sorry. Uh, you know, old habits, but, uh, I, I, I'm proud of that team, man. We we made the playoffs last year with uh, with Mama Bear with the cancer and uh, everything. I know this is a, 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 Flo a Florida uh, oh, okay. sports. It's okay. against the Buccaneers. So you can talk about the game. Yeah, um, yeah, because there's a big matchup this week. You know, um, 
you know, uh, so I, I get to, as an adult, talk about a Washington playoff game, which is freaking awesome for me. <laughs> um, but uh, at the same time, I'm looking forward to that game. Um, our The Washington front seven is very good. Uh, yeah. It's going to be tough for Brady um, to handle Chase Young. That Chase Young kid, I, mm. dude, I have not seen such an instant impact since Sean Taylor. And that's 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 like really real. And that's I'm sorry. That's I know that's big words to say, but I haven't seen a rookie get on a field, earn a captain's badge, and then actually produce. You know, like it's every game he's doing something. Um, so I'm excited to see how how that goes. I know Tom Brady. You've been covering him more than I have, um, but from what I understand, they've been. I mean, they've been playing really good football towards the end of the late, uh, the end of the season. So, um, yeah. and, and you know as well as I do, man, Tom Brady's scary in the playoffs. You know, what I mean? you know, it's just freaking Tom Brady. I hate him. It is what it is. But you can't respect. You can't disrespect the goat and act like he ain't. You know, he. I think he has proven by far he's the best quarterback to ever live. So we're going to see, we're going to see how that goes, man. I'm not going to lie. I, I'm a little worried, uh, <laughs> but um, you know, it, it is what it is, man. If our, uh, no disrespect to Alex Smith, because his story is amazing. I mean, the guy almost died two years ago, but uh, you know, people that have not seen that documentary on him, uh, it, 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 mark my words. It's, it's a really good documentary to watch. Great story. Um, so I, I think that um, I think it's going to be interesting to see see how it goes. Um, uh, of course, I would say Tampa Bay by ten, being a realistic person, but we'll we'll see. Uh, you know, the homer in me says Chase Young, you know, balls out. We score ten on defense, and maybe Tampa, maybe Tampa Bay scores seven. Yay, ten to seven, we win. <laughs> yeah, I know that. <laughs> I mean, in, in all honesty, you know. The Bucks, you know, they obviously they turned it around. You know, again, this team was seven and nine a year ago. They're eleven and five now. And again, no, no offense to Jameis because Jameis was a seminal, and that's somebody that I cover on here. So no offense to him, but the team has been much better offensively. And I think the one thing that the Bucks just the, the Chase Young and them, they're going to have to get pressure. If they can get pressure, it's going to be interesting because, as you can see, and <coughs> even he's passed. When he was in New England, if you can get him on his butt, he he, he's, he gets in trouble. He'll take right. And even if even if uh, you know even if Mike Evans is out, Godwin and Brown, and they're gonna they're gonna have issues trying to cover both of those guys. Then you throw in Scotty Miller or Tyler Johnson. That kid, Tyler Johnson, I got to see him in the Outback Bowl last year in Minnesota. That kid's a stud in the making too. So nice. it's it's gonna be interesting to see. If Washington can apply pressure, great. If they can't, it's going to be a long, long game for them. But, I, you know, it's great. I, I, Alex Smith, by far, has to be the comeback player of the year. If he doesn't win comeback player of the year, the NFL needs to check themselves. Because, like you just yeah. said, the guy nearly died. I mean, he had a just, just the same thing that happened to the kid at, at UCF a few years ago here, here in Tampa. Uh, the kid that transferred, now he's played for Florida State. Um, same thing. He had that bad leg injury that nearly, you know, could have killed him. They, you know, got yeah. him field. And I mean, I, 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 I think if I'm remembering correctly, it was something like 17 surgeries in 11 months or something like that. It was insane, you know. So, um, I, you're, you're, you're absolutely correct. Alex Smith does deserve it. I don't see anybody else that could uh, – that that could take that from him. I would really hope that you know we get that he gets that because I, I, I'm not going to lie. Alex Smith is yeah. I, I, he the things that he's done for football and and also the Washington Redskins cannot be denied. Um, so yeah. you know it will we'll we'll, uh, we'll see how that goes. I'm not going to lie as as a fan of the Washington football team. Uh, I'll say it correctly. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, Christy, could you plug that in for me? I'm sorry. My, my phone's going in and out and the battery's making all this noise. Um, as a fan, I'd like to see us draft some sort of quarterback in, uh, in the early rounds this year just because 
I, I mean, I hate to say this, man, but I'm tired of holding my breath every time a quarterback gets hit. You know what I mean? Because it, it, it's scary to to have Alex Smith as your guy when you know we don't have that great of an offensive line, and you know I'm I'm worried that you know he's just one hit away, brother. You know what I mean? And it's really scary. No, you know? I I agree with you. I but I mean, who's out there that's going to be? I mean, obviously you're going to see. Um, the top two, the two kids that are playing in the national title game are going to go Trevor Lawrence and um, Justin Fields. Yeah, are both they're not, they're not going know? to be available. Uh, yeah. Bro, I mean, I, I hate to say this, and I know this is going to sound homer as hell, but there's a Cal Trask that's going to be open in the late round. I that's think, it. unfortunately, yeah. we'll touch on it in a second, the Oklahoma game, but unfortunately, I think that does nothing but hurt him, uh, even though – it, what he did this year should not be underestimated. Um, right. He he had a, a year that nobody else in in Florida Gators history has had, uh, right. you know, passing through the air. And that includes, you know, Rex Grossman, who, in my opinion, was one of the most pure passers we ever had. Uh, Shane Matthews, same thing. You know, it, you know, we talk about these great quarterbacks that Florida has had. And, yeah, we haven't really produced in the NFL at a quarterback level too much. But at the same time, you can't say that we haven't dominated the college football world in some years with Danny and Grossman and Palmer and, you know, Shane Matthews and, you know, the, uh, all those great names. And so when – for just for Kyle Trask to even be able to be mentioned in that group of quarterbacks – you yeah. know, uh, we don't need to underestimate, you know, what he did. Now, um, I'll say that, unfortunately, that Oklahoma game, I think a lot of people will see that, you know, uh, Emory Jones looked better in that game. And if if you don't know football, you're like, oh, Emory's better. But when you realize that Emory practiced with those wide receivers every day, you know, for the last, you know, two years, that second and third team, of course you're going to know those wide receivers better. It was like, you know, Kyle, Kyle Trask is like picking up a pickup game and like point, pointing at who he thinks might catch the ball. You know, it was it, it, it was sad. Um, I, I, I wish, in my opinion, it was an honorable thing for him to still play. But I kind of feel like that should have been a decision on Coach Mullen to just be like, hey, man, uh, I think you should sit. I mean, this can this game can do nothing but hurt you. I mean, and uh, especially with the knowledge, well, dude, Dan Mullen came into that game. The whole team came into that game. We knew we didn't want to be there. They yeah. didn't want to be there. That it, it, it wasn't one of those things, you know. When and I'm not gonna lie, we know that we were a different team without Pitts. I mean, yeah. insert LSU here. Bro, we were we were very definitely a different team without Pitts and his dominating ability, not only in the red zone, but just the ability to to pull two defenders off of you know Copeland, Grimes, you know J- uh, Cope, you know uh, we all season long, Tony in the back of the you 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 couldn't double team one of those guys, no. and you know you get one on one with one of those guys, they're gonna Randy Moss you. You know what I mean? It's just that's how it goes, you know. And so uh, seeing them go out and and let me be evident, let let me say this real quick because I see so many people talking trash about these kids. Um, it, you know as well as I do. I know you covered it. You saw it. Derek King might not ever be the same after a bowl game injury that he that, I mean and and let's let's just be real the NCAA needs to do something they need to do something they need to make the postseason more meaningful or this is what we're going to have have happen year in and year out if you're a player that that can go third round or better you're talking over 500,000 that you know brand new car brand new house mama's you know out you know mama's being taken care of you know whatever and uh, next thing you know, you get injured and all that changes. And in these games that really are nothing more than a damn scrimmage expedition, it seems like, you know, it, it, it doesn't matter to these teams. Now, that's not disrespecting what Oklahoma did, dude. Oklahoma was a good football team this year. We yeah. needed every player on that field. You know what I mean? Like there, there, there needed to be no opt outs, and then it would have still been a high scoring game, and we still would have had to fight for the for it at the end. 
Um, right. We couldn't afford to have what we had out. It's just plain and simple. Uh, now, do we need to freak out as Gator Nation? You know, because um, this is one of the things I wanted to touch on. Because we, there's Bradley, I know you've seen it, man. There's so many things going on out there right now. Damn, Mullen's going to the NFL. Uh, fire Todd Grantham. If he don't want to fire Todd Grantham, fire him too. And I mean, that is the most lunatic thing I've ever heard in my entire life. Um, I, I don't know if you saw the post I posted the other day, but I told him to go seek help and, and, and see a doctor, you know, yeah. because you obviously aren't remembering what this program was before Dan Mullen got here, <laughs> you know. Um, I, do. I do. Yep, I do. So, you know, <laughs> uh, unfortunately, those McElwain and Muschamp years are kind of etched into our brains. And uh, Lord help us if we ever go back to something like that. And so – I, I just want I, I I want to know uh, to say that in my opinion, if there is any Gator fan out there that is listening to this, just like literally, they make Xanax for this type of things. Like, calm the hell down. <laughs> like, it's gonna be okay. <laughs> you know, I mean, the, the word you know. Let's listen to what Aaron Rodgers said. R e l a x. Just relax. It's yeah. It's fine. You know. Again. The one game, Phil, coming into this year that I thought the Gators needed to win was Georgia. I was tired. Yeah. I have a good friend of mine that's a big Georgia fan, I, and I watched the game with him every year. The last three years I've watched the game with him. This was the first year that I've been able to leave Buffalo Wild Wings with a smile on my face. Because the there previous year, Georgia beat us. And, you know, it was nice to finally beat them. And, I, you know, I, I remember coming into the season, everybody was hyping up Tennessee. We got what we – we found out what Tennessee was after the think the third or fourth week, what Tennessee was. Tennessee is still not quite there. You know they're going to be back. Sooner or later, Tennessee will be back, and Florida will have two rivals with Tennessee and Georgia in the East. Vanderbilt, no. Kentucky, no. Not really. Missouri, Missouri's been kind of the, the, the throne. You know, I must have lost it. But it's been the throne in our side. Um there, you know, for Gator or for the Gators out here. But yeah, it's it's one of those things where, you know, that's been the the, the, the thing too uh, recently uh, with them. Let me see if I can get Bill back. But yeah, guys, if, if you are a Gator fan and listening to this, here we, go. we got it back up here. Let's pull it back up here. There we go. We got it back. Um, I was just saying that Missouri was, a, was, you know, a thorn in our side, but I think we've kind of got since. Mullen has joined the, joined the crowd. We haven't had really had any issues with them. Again, just the one team now that everyone in the SEC needs to beat is Alabama because that's the one right. team right now that has dominated the conference for, what, the past 10 years. They're in, what, yeah. their sixth or seventh national title game. And, I and I'm going to be honest with you, bro. I yeah. think it needs to be us that beats them too. Like we need oh, yeah. that win. Like, 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 if you're uh, if you're Georgia or you're Florida right now, when you're looking at this, you are you need to be that guy, okay? Because yeah. we're in a race to whoever can get to Alabama. And I'm going to be honest with you. I think if we have a very good shot next year. And I know uh, you know a lot of people are going to think that I'm just talking trash and not you know they're like oh we saw your future last son come on man like let's let's be real let's let's it, stop um, Gravon Dexter for instance uh, wait until that kid has an entire spring training with Coach Savage and it puts on thirty pounds uh, he is going to be a living nightmare for anybody that we play Zachary Carter coming back next year is going to be extremely huge. Um, the, the kid Marshall, that five-star wide, uh, cornerback, they say that he is going to be an instant starter. Uh, they say he's a kid that is going to make an instant impact. And then of course we've got the number one Juco, uh, player, uh, the kid, I think it's Dewan, I think is his first name, but Black is his last name. I cannot wait to see him hit the field. He's going to be an instant Gator uh, favorite just because of all the things that he went through along the way. Uh, it was grades, and then he went out, and he just, damn it, he just put it in his head. He was going to be a Florida Gator. He was going to do what he had to do, and he was going to get those grades up. 
And uh, hats off to the coaching staff for sticking with him, staying in contact, because I've heard multiple reports that, you know, Mullen and, and company would constantly text and constantly stay in contact with the kid because they believe in him and he is a talent. Uh, so we, it's going to look good. Uh, people are underestimating the dynamic ability of what we have coming between having an Emory Jones and a and a Bowman mm-hmm. in the back, uh, a Demarcus Bowman in the backfield at the same time. Um, it, 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 and people aren't understanding that, yes, we're going to lose Grimes. We're going to lose Tony. We're going to lose Pitts. I personally feel like uh, Zipper and, yes, he had a bad bowl game. He dropped a lot of stuff. But Gamble was a perfect passing – I mean, a, a blocker. Uh, I like Gamble on the blocking more than I do in the air. But he can still catch the ball. But – Jacoby Copeland came in at the end. Jacob Copeland, he he showed up at the end of the season. He is going to be a pure number one guy next year. And then, you know, uh, Xavier Henderson showed some stuff. So, I, I mean, this offense is not falling off, Bradley. It's not, you know. And so people need to watch the Florida Gators. I mean, if you you think that Dan Mullen has not been building something over these last few years, they, they really need to, you know, be careful. I, I'll be honest with you. I'm sure hope that there is out of conference games because if so, I'll get to see them on September 11th when they come to Raymond James Stadium with the Bulls. Bro, we got to get through, we got to get through this COVID, and then I, I swear to you, you we got to figure something out, man. I mean, I, I don't care if it's a, a live stream from the game. Get Bradley in the swamp. Like I'm gonna start a hashtag. Damn it. <laughs> I, 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 you know, I. Phil, I've, I've been a fan. Like I said, I, was, I talked to Shane just a few minutes ago, and I told him, I said, Shane, I've been a fan since I was a baby, and I've never right. come close. I actually asked, asked a website that I write for if I could get one game next year in Gainesville. I'm not asking for a season. Just get me one game there, and I would drive up on a Friday, stay Friday night, go to the <coughs> game on Saturday, and then come home on Sunday. But, I mean, I, you know, I've never been there. <laughs> I've yeah. heard it's beautiful. And, and dude, I'm telling you, there, there's, there's a moment when you walk in those front gates, and you can't see much at first. Like everything, there's kind of like walls in the way and stuff like that. And then you walk through those gates, you get past all the officers and stuff, and you come around, and you see a little, you see a little painting on the on the front of that wall, and then you come in, and you get your first glimpse of that field and the crowd and just the energy. And I, I, I truthfully hope that, you know, I, I would honestly say this to you. Wait until it's a non-COVID year, bro. The, okay. the swamp with 90,000 in it, you know, 90,000 plus in it is way different than those games that this court uh, that we're having to deal with with this COVID stuff, man. And, uh, you know, I, I'm just ho- I'm just hoping and praying like I was at a customer's house today that worked at a hospital and she just got the vaccine. Um, and she said it made her feel a little bit lightheaded. I know this is off sports, but you know, it's important. Uh, we're all hoping that this will come to an end soon, but she said she felt a little lightheaded. She took a nap. She felt better. Um, it, it, so I'm hoping that this is going to be something, if we're seeing hospital workers get it now, then we, you know, the general public should probably get it pretty shortly. Um, I'm hoping that we can return, you know, to somewhat normalcy, uh, next year, especially for these players, because, uh, people are underestimating how much these players actually put into this. Um, they, they, they live, die, and breathe this stuff, man. Well, I you mean, know. Phil, I mean, I'll be honest with you. I went to a USF game this year, the very first USF game I covered this year. There were no fans in the stands. I have never been to an, a sporting event other than if the team is really, really awful, where the attendance is low. I have never yeah. been to a game where there's been no fans. And like I said, I'm hoping. And was it eerie? Was it eerie, honestly? Yes. I, I wrote an article about it. In my article, I wrote down that it was like being in a horror movie. It was like being in a yeah. horror movie. Like there was nobody wow. there. They're, you know, pumping in noise when they score a touchdown. The PA guy was still doing his job. Like if there were people in the crowd at Raymond James Stadium. That's why I'm kind of hoping if we do by the time that the fall rolls around, that the, the numbers are down so that we can play out of conference games because the Gators are coming to Raymond James Stadium this year. Yeah, if they that's, that's going to yeah. be interesting for me because, again, being that I 
love both of those football teams. Jeff's right. got to have a rigmarole of a day trying to figure out how to beat Florida. USF is not quite there yet. Maybe a few more years because they had a bad year this year. USF only won in the only game that I was at they won the Citadel early on in the season. Then they went on. It's just well, let me ask you this because I know you know a lot more about USF than I do. Uh, yeah, I, I they're like my secondary team, but at the same time, I don't, I, I haven't, I've been working so much, mm-hmm. man. It's been so hard to keep up with anything other than Florida. But um, I, let me ask you this: Do they have some exciting players, you know, to build around? Is there anybody coming or I, I, anything that you have heard that you know, as a, a a Bulls fan that doesn't follow everything, do we have do we have a, a reason to be excited? Because unfortunately, I know this year was not something to be excited about. <laughs> no, yeah, no this this year was not. I mean, not good at not good at all. I mean, they were close. Now. The one question that, you know, and I do have a podcast tomorrow night that we do, it's all USF, but we talked about this after every game. The, the question last year was the quarterback position. Jordan McLeod, okay. he's going to the transfer portal. So, again, the question for Coach Scott is this year is they're going to have to get a quarterback in here that's going to be able to start. That's the first thing you got to do. The second thing is they got to shirt up the defense. USF. Gave up way too many points. Now, the only game that I saw them really play hard on defense was against UCF. And that's kind of interesting because the Knights are a hard team to defend. They right. fast pace offense. They get on the field. They snap the ball. They're, you know, they score quickly. Somehow, right. USF was able to slow them down. Now, if it wasn't for a fumble, which they had a couple games like that all year long, where it was one mistake that USF did not make, the season would have been completely different. But then again, that is um, could have, would have, should have. And you know, and, and I hate to say that, but the, I hate to say it, but uh, I think Florida can sit in that same boat. You know what I mean? Uh, Texas A&M. Look, you know, look at the Texas A&M game. Uh, yep. We're running clock. All of a sudden, you know, uh, Davis fumbles. And let me say this, man. Uh, I felt so bad for Davis in that situation. It was one of the very few times uh, this year that I was very upset. Well, not not uh, a few times this year because there was a lot this year that I could have gotten upset about. But um, uh, it was a few times that play call was a huge issue, okay? Uh, here's me. If you know a player has an issue with fumbling um, and has had an issue in the past with fumbling and the game's on the line, you have plenty of play calls to be able to do. It's your job as a coach to be able to make your personnel work for you okay uh i guarantee you throw that ball out to the flat and hit davis out in the corner he doesn't do nothing worse than get two yards and get out of bounds okay uh you know get knocked out of bounds okay maybe the play clock isn't killed still running but it's at worst that's that's what best happens he makes somebody miss and he's out to the open gets us the first down um, right. a, a Tony, a, a Tony coming across the screen, you know, hand, hand the ball off to Tony, uh, Wright was playing amazing that game, uh, give him the ball. I mean, there's so many options that we had that just do not add up to handing Malik Davis, the damn ball under center right. when unfortunately Malik Davis is a smaller guy. And if he gets popped by one of those guys, it's, uh, it's obvious that he might let that ball go up. And so, you know, um, I put that less on Malik Davis as I do the coaching. Right. That, no, uh, I, mean, I, I was on vacation, you know, when that, when that we lost that game, I, I just sat down. I was helping. I was, I just, we had just got into the house that we rented up in Orlando and I just sat down and we went in the game. I'm like, okay, this is the game that was kind of one of those games that on the schedule that, Florida was going to have a tough time winning. And I'm like, oh, look, we're going to yeah, win. Like I, I, I even said it. Uh, I, I said it at the beginning of the season. I said, I'm more worried about Texas A&M than I am Georgia. I said yeah. that. You know what I mean? Uh, so because I, I think you hit it nail on that this team played its best football against Georgia. And then I think it played its best football against Alabama, maybe not defensively. But in the second half, we saw uh, a defense that stood up and held its ground against a very good Alabama team. Uh, also, I want to point out that I don't know if you saw it, but in the Alabama game, Florida started running a 5-2 defense. Okay. And 
Um, it, it switched up from the three four. I am, I, dude. I don't know about you. I absolutely hate the three four. I, I, I despise it. I despise any coach that runs it. I, I, I think it's the, it's idiotic. It might be great in the NFL, but in the NCAA, it's too fast to be putting that many damn linebackers to get beat one on one coverage, and I'm tired of. It. You know what I mean? We switched to a 5-2. We were able to halfway contain Najee Harris. Nobody can contain Najee Harris. He's just he, – he, he's good. Nobody can. I don't care. You know what I mean? Get the best Gator defense of all time. That kid still runs for 400. You know what I mean? So, um, I'm just I, I'm just saying that kid – you know, but we did limit him in the second half, which was, which was a better thing. And we did so with that defense. So, I'm hoping – that that was something that we might see towards the future, that we might be pulling away from the three, four a little bit. Um, we'll see how that progresses. I don't know. I just don't think that to be honest with you, we've recruited well enough at the linebacker position the last four uh, few years to be able to, uh, we really missed. Um, I want to say Jared Davis. Wasn't that his name last year? The linebacker from the year before, I, dude, we missed him. Oh my God, did we miss him this year? And don't get me wrong, but Vontrell Miller had a had a very productive season. He he tried, but at the same time, I I, I would if you could imagine having Davis for one more year and Vontrell Miller back there at that point. Oh man, it would have been great. But I just felt like we were a little bit too young in the linebacker position this year to do anything majorly against that run. I well, don't know, man. Let me ask you this because this is your – I respect your opinion. What do you think? Do you think we should be done with Grantham? I'm personally feeling like it's 2020, man. We saw everybody have a have a bad year in defense. I don't know if it's more – it takes longer for these players to actually learn a scheme on defense than it is to just throw the ball down the field. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I, I really don't know if – if we need to just calm down and give him one more year, you know, because his contract's up next year anyway. So, I mean, what are we really going to lose by just giving him that one more shot? Because last year, I don't know if you remember this, but the last year and the year before, the year before we were top 15 in defense. Last year, we finished seventh in overall defense. This year, as horrible as we were, we still led the SEC in sacks, you know. So, do we – hit this panic button that all these fans on social media want to want to hit. I'm sorry, man. I'm, I I think we, you and I know a little better than that. So yeah. what is your opinion? Uh, no, I, 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 I don't think Phil, to be honest with you, I, I'm going to say no, because again, think about this and, and I'm going to use this for, for USF as well. When you don't have any spring ball, you can't play spring ball. So you can't play. You want to, you know, last year I was, I, I had, you know, the, uh, the the honor of going to USF spring game. And it was awesome because you got to stand on the sidelines as a media member. I got to see them run plays both defensively and offensively. That's You're awesome. Going- so now, given that they've had that time to gel with each other, when you take that away, which it was gone this year because of COVID, you give them that if, if and I'm hoping, we're praying in God that the next few months they'll be able to go and play a little bit of spring ball that if that happens, I, I no, I, the defense will be. I think everybody's defense will be much better next year. I think there's been yeah, more too. support in the NCAA this year than there ever has been offensively. I really honestly think right now the national title game is going to be a high scoring game because yeah. Alabama score points, Ohio State can score points. Now the thing with Ohio State is, can they slow down Alabama's offense? Which no one is and, and, let, and let's let's point out how much that's changed since you know previous years. Do you not remember? I think it was like a twelve point national championship game between Alabama and LSU a couple of years ago, or something like that. It was like six three or some crazy uh, stuff like that. So you know the game has changed a lot here lately, and I think it might be that also um, strength and conditioning. I don't think any of our teams were up to par strength. Dude, you can't tell me that that many Gator players have forgot how to tackle. I'm yep. sorry. Yep. And, you know, we go from one of the best tackling teams in the SEC the year before last, and then all of a sudden these players just forgot how to tackle all of a sudden. Sean Davis, um, one of our best tackling machines ever, his uh, last year 
comes back this year and just uh, in the first couple of games, it just looked like he was trying to head hunt the whole time. He just wanted to lay the big hit or no hit at all. But then as it progressed and I'm watching him, I'm like, I, I really just don't know if they have the strength to take them down. Like they're, it's not even like they're doing bad tackling. They're there. They're just not taking them down. And so I, I if you remember, um, the year before Chauncey graduated, uh, not graduated, but the year before Chauncey Gardner had a really great year. He, he, dude, uh, who was it? I, I think it was Moreno or whatever, or it might have been Chubb. One of them just ran him over like absolutely ridiculous in the Georgia game. It, it, you know, you, you had to feel bad for the kid. It was one of those embarrassing moments, but at the same time, you were just looking at it and you're like, oh, God, you know, he Savage gets a hold of him. And he makes it a point in the offseason. He said, I'm never getting run over again. You know what I'm saying? And and damn it, his <laughs> you know, his last year year, he didn't get run over again. And he played with swagger. And I really think we need to just understand that I don't think enough of those kids had enough time with Savage. Uh, and because I totally believe in Savage. I mean, I want that guy to stay here forever, give him a yacht with a big old dumbbell on the side of it. You know what I'm saying? Whatever you want to do, I don't care. Keep this man because uh, when he is able to actually get those guys in the weight room and be able to get the intensity up that he brings, uh, I don't think we there's a better strength and conditioning program in the nation. Um, so, you know, big things on the way, bro. You know, I think we'll be okay. Again, like I said, you know, the tackling thing, spring football. I mean, that's when you develop – you know, again, yeah. we're not again. Football players don't forget how to tackle. It's like riding a bike. You don't forget how to do it, no matter what age yeah. you are. You don't forget how to ride a bike or go swimming or whatever. So it, that could be another thing too, where you know, not having spring football, not having that conditioning during the spring, could easily have fallen into the season. Because again, yeah. leading up to all these games, every week that I wrote, that every week, every game that I you know covered for for, for Florida was. Oh, the defense is not, you know, oh, it's their fault. There are too many yeah. points being scored. And then we got, we beat Jordan. And everybody's like, okay, wait a minute. Now maybe this, this Florida defense is finally turning the corner. You know, now yeah. they, they, they get over the hump. They beat Georgia. We had a bad game against LSU. I watched that game. That was the game that pissed me off more than any of the games I watched this year, including the Oklahoma game, including the Alabama game. That game pissed me off more than anything because that was a makeup game. That was a game that didn't even yeah. need to be played, in my opinion. Yeah, we had and, a- and to be honest with you, if we would have played LSU when we were supposed to play them, we would have yeah. drugged them. But we would have drugged yeah. them by thirty-five. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, no question. Um, but in a way, that was what was frustrating about this team, uh, there, Bradley. And I don't know what to say about it, but when we needed to show up, we showed up huge. You know, yeah. dude, I've never been so proud of my football team after that Alabama game. Like. I, I don't know if you saw the post, but I mean, 37 years of me being a Gator fan, I've never cried over a game. I had tears in my eyes after that game watching Tr- Kyle Trask go down on the knee. You know what I'm saying? I, I was proud of my damn football team. We took Alabama to the wire and Nick Saban couldn't do nothing but sit there and show respect after the game. Yeah. It was just I, I was like, you know, that that's a man that was really scared for a second, you know, and I've got a I, I've got an adopted father that's from Alabama. And uh, he got on there and he didn't have a word of trash because him and I enjoy trash talking to each other. We we go back and forth and, you know, it's fun. But uh, he didn't have a word. He says, I'm going to miss you. You made us cuss a lot last night. It was a great game. Uh, Good job. You know, and so I was proud of my boys. But then you turn around and you have a game like LSU where, you know, let's not even go into the Marco situation too hard, because in my opinion, we should have never been in that situation. Exactly. You know, uh, you know, yes, Marco screwed up, man. Uh, it, Marco screwed up horribly. Uh, it, I, I, to be dead honest with you, I don't know about a bigger screw up. Uh, I mean, I can't remember one where it's all on something that you did. Like, not not you were out of position. Not that you know they they hit a good pass and you were right there and it was over you. Not that you missed a tackle, but. You know, because there's still 10 other guys on the field that's got to make a tackle. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, that 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 isn't so much on you. But this that was just like and, and, you know, if you rewatch it, I feel bad for him because if you rewatch the play, the shoe literally comes off in his hand in the tackle. 
Like he's yeah. like, it's like he tackles him and he's like, all of a sudden he's got a shoe in his hand and he's like, what the hell is this? You know what I'm saying? It's like, I think he didn't even, I, I don't even think it passed in his brain to do anything other than, you know, launch the shoe. Like it, it was just like one of those things. And, you know, and I, I don't know, maybe, you know, I, I, as a Gator fan, I, I maybe he was just trying to get the, Shoe off the field, uh, you know, uh, shoe gate 2020. That's what we're calling it, but <laughs> it is what it is. Right. You know, we can't put it on to, we can't put that all on him. Um, and you can't even put it all on Pitts sitting because I hate to tell you, man, LSU was not better than Missouri or Kentucky that we drug without Pitts. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, like, I, I was very disappointed to see the preparation coming into those games that didn't matter. I, add another Oklahoma, add Oklahoma to that list. Texas A&M, bro. I'm not really even mad about that game because honestly, we had to we had the game plan to win. We really right. did. Minus the fumble, we win that game. I, I don't care what you say. If we don't fumble on that drive, we win that football game. You know what I mean? Um, but but the LSU game in particular. And then your Oklahoma game, it was just a lack of effort that I haven't seen before with Dan Mullen's football team. The other thing that I saw a lot of this year that I wish they would address, there was too much damn showboating on our, de- on our defense. I mean, you get the quarterback overthrows the wide receiver by five yards and our defensive back want to sit there and act like he did something. You know, and I'm, I'm really tired of the swagger that they think that they have just because they're a part of the DBU. Guess what? You you basically ruined our shot at being called DBU any longer right now. Like, we should not be called DBU right now. Like, I'm sorry. Not not giving up 600 yards of offense to Alabama. I don't care how you cut it. You know what I mean? And so I, this, this automatic attitude that I need to showboat and do things like this just because I'm a Florida Gator, I'm really getting tired of that. And it started right around – the the Peach Bowl win, if you remember, our defense got a pick. They ran all up into the end zone, and they were all lined up, and they're all with their arms crossed and doing. And to be honest with you, great TV. You know, I, I stood up. I'm like, yeah, look at my boys. You know what I'm saying? But they had just gotten a game winning interception. It wasn't first down and incomplete pass and let's act like we won the Super Bowl. You know what I mean? (laughs) And as bad as Chauncey Gardner was, and as much as people hated him for his antics, he never threw a damn shoe down the sideline. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, he's he's in Jacksonville right now. And, you know, I got a feel for him. That that Jaguars team. um, Oh, who are you talking about, CJ? I'm talking about CJ Henderson. That's what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. Poor CJ, bro. That uh, that Jaguars team right now is so horrible. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and as a Jags fan, you, you know, I'm a, I, I grew up uh, in Washington. I moved to Florida right around the time it was. I moved to Florida in '94. They started their team in '95. I literally still have the original pennant that has the old school Jaguar, not not the what the one they went to, but it has that old school Jaguar on it. So you know, I I, I do follow the Jags. It's so sad to see that team be what they are because two years ago they were almost in the Super Bowl. You know what I mean? They were – I'm sorry. I'll say it. I know you probably won't because you run a sports show that, uh, you know, that you cover these teams and you got to be okay with Brady. Brady cheated his ass off against Jacksonville that game. I don't care what they say. They paid them damn refs. That ball was a fumble. I don't care what they say. They picked it up. It would have been a touchdown. Jacksonville would have been up by two scores. I don't want to hear nothing. I'm salty still to this day. I I don't like Tom Brady because of it. Uh, I, I even don't like being patriotic because of it. Like I, 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 I'm like, I, it made me, cause I know that the Patriots are supposed to be like America's team. And like, I'm not like, I want to go for ISIS when they play Tom Brady. Like, I don't, <laughs> so <laughs> it is what it is, man. <laughs> well, it's, it's interesting because, you know, I am a Pats fan and, and it was a tough year this year. But I was very, very happy to see Tom come down here and bring the local team. Again, I, the Patriots are my AFC team. The Bucs are my NFC team. I grew right. up here. My first game was in 1987. I was four years old. 
So wow. I was I said the old, you know, at the, the great old, at, at the old sombrero. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> so I used to go every year uh, when they were in the black and blue division. When they were in with the Lions, the Bears, the Vikings, and the Packers. My oh, dad, good old my dad had a good friend of his that was a huge Chicago Bears fan. So every year I would go to the Bears Bucks game at Tampa Stadium. So I would get to see the Bears. I unfortunately didn't get to see Walter Payton, who I think is the greatest running back of all time. But I didn't get a chance to see Walter before he got sick and well, you know, obviously passed away. But I got to see a lot of good Bears teams through the years. But yeah, man. Yeah, man. The Bucks, you know, now I think with Bruce Arians, they are turning a little bit of a corner here. They they the defense has been good. Todd Bowles all of a sudden is drawing it up. They're blitzing. Now they're going to miss Devin White this Saturday because of COVID. Hey, yeah. how bad? How bad is the Mike Evans injury? Is he going? He only hyperextended his knee. As far as I know, they're going to let him rest. You know, in my in my opinion, I'll be honest with you, brother. I think they need to sit him. I and again, I'm not. Okay. I'm not saying they can't be. That I'm not saying that they're going to be Washington. What I'm saying is they don't need him to be. Washington this week they can right. wait and if they go to New Orleans which that could be another that could be a game that they're really going to have to step up because the Saints have owned them in the two games earlier this year if they go to Green Bay they got a they got a good shot because they took the they beat the Packers earlier this year here at Raymond James Stadium they have a good running game Rojo has been great I wrote Ronald Jones to me has been a very big surprise this year because I doubted him in the beginning of the season, and he has surprised me. You got Leonard Fournette, who still lowers his shoulder every once in a while, and you know you got you know you got Lashawn McCoy too as well, and you got that kid Keyshawn Vaughn who they got out of Vanderbilt. The running game is going to be I very. So important. Fournette, Fournette what? went to uh, Tampa Bay. I didn't know that Fournette yeah. went to Tampa Bay. Really? Yeah. Has too. he been playing well or? He, Phil, he was in <laughs> Bruce's doghouse for a few weeks, um, but he has emerged back because uh, Ronald Jones was out two games for He broke his finger. They put like two or three pins in his finger, and then he was out the next week for COVID. So he missed two weeks, but Jones ran yesterday. He had 78 yards on 12 carries, so he averaged almost six yards a carry. Um, okay. But Fournette will be definitely a force. And again, I was listening to the Pat McAfee show. They inter they interview Aaron Rodgers every Tuesday, so I'll have to watch it tomorrow. And they were talking about in the cold weather, because again, Green Bay will be cold. The bigger the running back, the harder the when they run downhill, kind of like a Derrick Henry type, it's harder to stop them, and it's and they hit harder because of the cool yeah. weather. So if yes, it does. And, and, you know, hit your hand, hit your hand with a hammer in the warm weather, and then hit it in the cold. I promise you, know you're going to see a difference. <laughs> so if they go, if, if they get past Washington, and they have to go to Green Bay, then it's going to be interesting. Now, if they have to play the Saints, it's gonna, that's going to be interesting too, because yeah. Um, I'll say this uh, to kind of back what where you're saying about how you, how they should sit Mike Evans. I kind of would agree with you that they, it's somebody that they don't need, and why I would say that. I'm not. I'm not trying to hate on uh, Washington, but their weakness is their secondary. Um, so a weapon like a Mike Evans could be replaced easily by a decent wide receiver right now because of the fact of the weakness in the secondary. Because now, now say one of your offensive linemen that's really important was about yeah. to was kind of iffy. Then I would say that guy's needed. You know what I'm saying? Like, you need to play this all-pro lineman. You know what I mean? Because guess what? You know, you're dealing with Chase Young. You're dealing with Sweat. You're dealing with Allen. You're dealing with literally four first-round picks on the front defense on the front defensive line. And then you've got Bostic, who has been an absolute, you know, force at middle linebacker. You know, our old Gator guy, you know, the uh, – we'll always remember him for that hit he put on Teddy Bridgewater in the, in the Louisville game. Um, but, uh, you know, I'd say you're correct where I would feel like somebody like Gronkowski or one of your tight ends or, or linemen would be more devastating to not have 
than say you're Mike Evans because I'll be real, man. I, I mean, in the end, like uh, I like the kid Darby from uh, that traded. We we traded uh, with Philly. We got from Philly. Um, I really like that kid Darby, but dude, our secondary it, it needs some help. Um, so. I would really like to see us go somewhere in the secondary early rounds. I know we need a quarterback, but uh, it, we need to decide what our quarterback is going to be, and then we need to go after a defensive back. And if we don't get one in the draft, we need to damn go to free agency immediately. So, well, we'll yeah, see what happens. like I said, you know, you haven't Antonio Brown may be a may be a virus off the field, but yeah. he is a great backup to Mike Evans being hurt. He still has right. versatility. And I think Chris Godwin is by far I don't, people, you know, and they talked about it earlier on local media here, you know, this morning. If you think Chris Godwin is not going to be a Buccaneer entry, you need to get your head checked because that kid has, you know, broke his finger earlier this year. He played, you know, they casted his finger, you know, taped it to one of the, he still played through the pain. You can't tell me that. Yeah. Kid is gonna be a and, and, you, and, and as a wide receiver to play through a hand injury, come on, man. You know, because I, especially with Tom Brady at quarterback, you know that ball is going to be there. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, I mean, that it, it takes a warrior to be able to fight through a hand injury as a wide receiver. I'd say that for sure. Well, and they, and it's funny, brother, you brought up the, the, the defensive line because Donovan Smith is going to have to cover Chase Young. That's going to be the biggest question. Montez Sweat is going up against Tristan Wirfs, who's a rookie, but Wirfs has been pretty good this year. So, if one of them and, now, and, 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 and do realize that you know on that defensive line we like to throw him around a lot too. So you'll probably see rookie on rookie with Chase because he goes on both sides of the line all the time. So okay. it's gonna uh, we're gonna try to put and we're gonna try to put that there. I, I I'll put it to you like this: you, you said it at the beginning of the show, and we're gonna confirm it. If Washington can get pressure on Tom Brady, <laughs> we'll see what we have. You yes. know, but uh, I'm gonna be honest with you. Here's my problem. While I think that Washington's front seven is good enough to keep us in the game, I don't feel like Washington's offense is better than Tampa Bay's defense. Okay. And so when you have when you have an offense that's not as good as Tampa Bay's defense, and then you have Tom Brady on the other side, when you sit here and you kind of look at the math of it all, it kind of adds up to how long are you really going to put Tom Brady on the back? Because eventually Tom Brady's going to hit a pass. And then he's going to hit another one and then he's going to hit another one. And it's going to be like, what's going on? So I, I, I'll be real. We just, we just uh, on every down, I don't care. I love Jack Del Rio being our defensive coordinator up there. I think that was a huge add on um, for Washington, but I'll, I'll be honest with you, man. Jack Del, Jack Del Rio is going to have to call his best gay best game. And we're going to have to really stay in Tom Brady's face and make him throw some picks, if, uh, uh, you know, and I, I don't see it. Happening. If I was a betting man, I'm not taking this bet. I'll tell you that. <laughs> so. well, it, it's funny that you bring up, you bring up the defense too, because you know, we didn't have Shaq Barrett and Devin White. Shaq will be back. Shaquille Barrett will be back. So if you put him on the other side with JPP and you got Sue, who still to this day is still a great, you know, defensive tackle. You know, it, it's – I mean, the, the one thing that the Bucks have missed this year is Vita Vea. Vita Vea, him being hurt most of the season really hurt them. Again, there's that 3-4 defense that you love so much. Uh, but yeah. Vita Vea was the, <laughs> was the anchor in that defense, and with him not there, the run defense has hurt more than their pass defense. But, it, again, same thing with them. The weakness is in the secondary. Uh, right. Not at same. Because Antoine Winfield Jr. is by far one of the best draft picks the Bucks got this year. That kid's a stud. He's just like his dad. I mean, his dad yeah. is ferocious, and he's just as ferocious as his father was. So, and then you got Murphy Bunting, who all of a sudden came to play this past Sunday. All of a sudden, he hasn't had a great all season. Um, so, yeah. who are y'all going to match up against uh, McLaurin? Because you know. Uh, he's got a thousand yards on. He's got a thousand yards on the season. Uh, he even missed two games, and he still has over a thousand yards on the season. Uh, kid's a beast. Who y'all gonna line up against him? Probably Carlton Davis. He's the best cover corner we have. That'll probably be who you'll see him up against. Um, I and that, see, there, there's the thing with Alex Smith. If you know, you don't want to get him hurt, but then you have you know, and, and again, Todd Bowles loves to blitz. 
So he'll be bringing the blitz. Trust me on that. He, the, the, the Bucks are, I think, one of the top blitzing teams in the NFL. So don't be which – scare, Which I'm not going to lie. It scares me, man, because, uh, you know, Alex Smith did not look good on hit, having to run around uh, last week. Uh, that cap is still not better. Um, I – you know, I, I, I'm a little surprised that we played Alex Smith this last week. I know it was do or die. We had to. But uh, that kid that they brought in at the end of the Carolina game, he almost got us a win. I don't even know his dag on uh, Heineke or something like that. I remember Chase Young making that little video talking about Heineke. So yeah. I guess that's what we're going to call him. Uh, <laughs> but uh, anyways, I, I but he looked good. So – I don't know, man. I, I, I'm not going to sit here and try to uh, try to downplay anything with Alex Smith. I think I think he's earned the right for us to just ride with him. Um, I think we all know that this is kind of uh, this. The the good thing with the Washington Redskins is that we can all understand that this was a good building year mm -hmm. and Ron Rivera's first year. Uh, we've got the Chase Young. That's going to be a, a a monster for years to come. Um, we just need some offensive weapons, man. That Gibson kid, the running back. Now y'all need to watch out for that because you said your, your run defense kind of, kind of hurts that Gibson kids really good. So, you know, it, it will, it'll be interesting to see. I, I think the, the most interesting matchup in this, in this game that we can talk is Washington's offense versus, uh, Tampa Bay's defense. I really do because it's going to be, it, it, it's going to be, can Washington actually score? Because we know that Tom Brady's going to score a little bit, you know. But if 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 the defense can make a couple stops and Washington can actually run that ball, we might see an interesting matchup, man. Yeah, like I like I said, you know, again, we we can sit here and you know, I love how these people, you know, will come out and say, "Oh, the Bucks will win easily." Well, you know what? That's why they play the football games because you know what? There are games I've looked at this year that said, "Yep." The team's going to win. They're going to dominate. And you know what? It's closer than – Well, let's insert, let's insert undefeated Pittsburgh versus Washington here. You right. know, uh, yeah. Pittsburgh was rolling. Washington had lost two games. And then right. all of a sudden, you know, here we go. Washington breaks their undefeated streak. So, you know, don't, don't, don't underestimate anybody in the NFL. These are all professionals. That's for sure. You right. know? Yeah, no, no hey, doubt. I know this is a Florida sports show, but shout out to the Browns, man. First time since 2002. I'm kind of, I mean, I'm not a Browns fan at all, but hey, whatever. Like, uh, go Brown guys, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, the Bucks and the, and the Browns ended their playoff droughts. You know, both teams made it to the postseason for the first time in a long time. So now the longest streak, you know, is in New York. So. Yeah. And the team that owns that is, I think, very far away from breaking it. Uh, yeah, to say that, I hate to say, I hate to say that, especially with a bunch of Gators being up there, uh, Pirine uh, being up there. I, I think he showed a good, decent rookie year. I mean, he he needs to progress a little bit more. Uh, a problem with Pirine's always been speed, but you know, he, we do know he has a burst. Just ask Auburn. <laughs> so. Okay, you, you were talking earlier about tears in your eyes, dude. Hearing Mick Hubert <laughs> make that <laughs> call against Auburn, you know, it, it it's it's funny. Like I said, my late uncle is the one that brought me to Florida Gator football. Um, and every time that I hear Mick come on the radio on a Saturday, whether no matter who they're playing against, whatever time of the day, it always brings tears to my eyes because, again, it was my uncle that – brought me to Florida Gator football that day, the, that Auburn game that you're referring to. If anyone out there doesn't know what I'm talking about, go to YouTube and listen to Mick Hubert on my <laughs> end, on Michael P. Ryan's run, because it was so cool to hear, not only hear him go, you know, absolutely <laughs> shit, but the crowd at the swamp. I had never seen him do that. Other than that was one of the loud, that's one of the loudest pops. I'm gonna be honest because there's two of them. You see it when he breaks it, you can hear the first pop, and then when he breaks that last tackle and he's in the open, there's a second pop. That I, I dude, I, I'll be honest, that was some of the loudest I've heard the swamp. I'll be real. Uh, I mean, the time that I can think though, from what I've been listening to Nick all these years, was the hail mary against Tennessee. Um, the only one I would like to answer because it's one of my favorite calls by him. 
uh, was the Antonio Callaway from Will Greer. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, He's yeah. going to score. He's going to score. Touchdown. You know, it, it was just – and you could just hear – and, dude, I, I am jealous of anybody that was in the stadium that night uh, against Old Miss when, when when they hit that pass. Yes, that ended up being a horrible year right after that because, you know, Will Greer goes down. I'll be honest with you. If Will Greer doesn't go down that year, I do believe that Mac uh, may still be our coach. Like I'll be real with you. Uh, I I I I'll, I'll be total honest with you. I mean, it, all that stuff doesn't happen. Uh, Will Greer, Will Greer doesn't go down. We're one of the hottest teams in America. We're top, you know, top teams going in. I I think we might have won a national championship, or we would at least played for one. And then Mac Wayne would have still, and then Mac Wayne would have still been there. Um, I I would very definitely not like that <laughs> because I didn't really like Mac. But dude, Mac wasn't a bad coach. Um, he really wasn't. I, he needed his teeth whitened. That's for damn sure. Because I I got so tired of having to defend that joke, you know. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, you know, uh, he he wasn't a bad coach, and he was a hell of a quarterback. I mean, do remember that Mac is the one that found Kyle Trask. Uh, yeah. You know, the story, the story goes, Kyle Trask, you know, drove himself up there is had his dad drive him all the way up there, paid the gas, wasn't really even invited, got there. And then he started throwing the football and coach Mack walked up to Doug and was like, Hey man, who the hell's that? You know, and he's like, that's Kyle Trask. And he goes, who the hell's Kyle Trask? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, and uh, you know, he walked up to him and the, the rest is history. He asked him if he wanted to play football for the Florida Gators. And, you know, uh, a, a, as the story goes, the kid drove from all the way from Alabama with just a dream. And, you know, he, it, it started from there. Um, the, like I said, man, we cannot downplay – what Kyle Trask has been through, what he has done. He gives every backup quarterback in America a dream, man. He really yep. does, yeah. you know, uh, because determination, hard work, you know, uh, keeping on going after after every – I mean, dude, but let's not forget, you know, Dan Mullen tried to start him the year before. He broke his freaking ankle, like, uh, in practice. Like, we were like, we're done with Franks. You know, we're going to bench him. Trask is up, and he hurts his ankle in practice. You know, so even after that injury, for him to still keep with it, stay the course, and then come back and then turn into even uh, – we know he won't win the, fine, oh, the Heisman, man. I mean, we, we know that. Uh, let, let's just go ahead and say that. Um, I, I can't even be a homer and say that. Uh, but at the same time, um, let's uh, let's just really say thank you to Kyle Trask because uh, as Gator fans, he gave us a hell of a uh, you know a hell of a thing to watch, man. I don't know how good he'll be at the next level. I mean, for some reason, uh, the only downside to Kyle Trask that I see personally, uh, the ball floats a little bit too long for me. Um, I don't know if you've ever noticed that, but it, it kind of seemed like the ball stays in the air a little bit. Um, now that when you have a good wide receiver, that's going to go up and get it. That's great. But you know, in the NFL, you know, as well as I do, everything's faster. So, um, it, it's going to be interesting to see if he's going to be able to be good at the next level. Uh, you know, like I said, you know, obviously Jacksonville has the first pick. You're going to take Trevor Lawrence most likely. Um, so, uh, I'll be real with you, brother. I uh, did we not watch that game? <laughs> I mean, there's a kid from Ohio State that looks. I mean, I know. I, I mean, am I am I am I jumping to conclusions right now? What do you feel like? Who do you think is the number one quarterback in America? Uh, Mac Jones. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that kid. I hate that kid. Bro, let, let me put it to you like this. If you had all those wide receivers to throw to, you would look like a high the quarterback too. <laughs> that no one can stop. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, don't I'm not disrespecting the man. It still takes somebody to put the ball where those guys need to catch it. I mean, don't right. anybody that thinks that playing quarterback is easy. I don't care. You know, you, you really don't understand anything if you think playing quarterback is easy. But um, I, so no disrespect to him. But, uh, you know, I'm not going to lie. That Justin Fields kid, man, he showed me something. Uh, and, I, and and maybe it's just because I love to see Bulldogs fans cry. 
You know what I'm saying? <laughs> maybe, maybe they're like, they're like, man, we're down here with JT Daniels. You know, look at yeah. Justin Field right now. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, that, that, uh, maybe I'm just going for him because if he wins the Heisman, I'm going to troll so many Georgia sites. It's going to be ridiculous. <laughs> but, I mean, it's going to be interesting because now you're going to see Justin in a big game against Mac and, and Bama. You know, we're going to see that ball game. And, you know, Bro, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I think Alabama's going to win. I, I see, really and, and I hate I hate to be a homer because, again, being a Gator, being the SEC, and, and I will have an argument with anyone until they're blue in the face to tell me that the best conference in college football is not the SEC. You are out of your freaking mind if you think that it's Bro. not. So. 10 out of the last 14 national championships. That's yeah. all I can say. By four different teams, by four different teams and close to five. You know what I mean? It, like, like, let's be real. I mean, and look, 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 look at last year. Look at LSU. I mean, Joe Burrow, yeah. God, he heard, got hurt. I feel so bad for him. Bro, his I saw that. I, dude, I saw that, that injury. I, 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 I like all I could do was say, damn. You yeah. know, I, that's yeah. all I could say. I, I was just shaking my head. I was like, you know, even I, I hate LSU. Um, I, I love to talk talk trash to LSU. I, I love to do those, you know, to get that game. I, I'm a major person that uh, has pushed that rivalry as far as it can go. But um, when you see a kid that – cares so much you know i mean i mean that kid was throwing for 400 yards in a loss you know what i mean and i mean he was balling man it, it was crazy and i i i whoever taught that kid how to play quarterback from you know because his junior year he was not that good bro he came to the swamp brad, brad stewart picked him off took him back to the house you know let's let's remember we made joe burrow look like a like an average quarterback at best his junior year and he comes in his senior year and this kid's just phenomenal whoever worked with him in that off season again hire that guy you know what i mean <laughs> because uh, um it, 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 amazing what that kid turned into um but yeah. but yeah man i mean anybody i'm sorry but it's kind of like sec guys hating on alabama you know yeah. um uh, you know we we hate them. We we don't want to admit that they're so good, but the fact uh, you know the, the facts in the pudding. You know it, it's it, you can't say anything to them. And when it comes to the rest of the world, when you're sitting here and you've got an SEC team yet again and a national championship every freaking year. You know, how can you not deny this conference? You know, uh, Oklahoma is the biggest one. And, you know, they're trying to beat their chest because they beat our third string practice squad. Congratulations there, guys. You know, I'm not trying to take away from it. But at the same time, if you think you beat the Florida team that played Alabama, then you're out your damn mind. Yeah. You know what I mean? (laughs) So I I couldn't agree more. Again, you know, that's. That's the you know and and you know and again God love them but Buckeye fans you know they don't listen to this show very often but um, you know they they don't think there's anyone that plays football outside of the state of Ohio and well know, number one what, regardless whether they're good enough to be there I don't think they deserve to be there personally I, uh, really I mean say this right now the team that played in the Outback Bowl the Indiana Hoosier should have been in the Big Ten championship that's my opinion straight up. That's me. Yeah. I, you know, I know they lost to Ole Miss, which is again another SEC team we were just talking about. Um, yeah, and, and bro, and, and hats off to Lane Kiffin. Yeah, you see. know, because that's going to be a dangerous team come come couple years, bro. You know, there's going to yeah. be some big teams like Alabama that's going to have to go into a to an Ole Miss one year, and I think Lane Kiffin's going to be that guy that's going to be, you know, a shocker. And and let's look at the uh, who's the head coach of Mississippi State. He's another one that's that can dial yeah. it up. Yeah, I, I'm not gonna lie, um, bro. It's kind of like South Carolina. I, I kind of don't really have much respect for Mississippi State. I mean, maybe I'll be, maybe I'll regret that statement one day. Um, right. But uh, and, and let me say this, just as just a thought out of the run, Vanderbilt and South Carolina. What the hell are y'all thinking? <laughs> like, did did you just decide y'all 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 know you're gonna suck in football for the next ten years, so you're not gonna pay a good coach to coach there? 
Because if you think you're getting better than Derek Mason or Will Muschamp, and damn you for letting those guys go where they right. go and make some defense in this country, some, you know, somewhere. Yeah. And and knowing our freaking luck, it's going to be Alabama or some dumb team like that. You know what I mean? And, and you know, you, you sit here and you fire these guys and you unleash them onto college football because uh, the Will Muschamp up there to Michigan with Jim Harbaugh, if that doesn't intrigue you, I don't know what will. You know what I mean? Because those two minds together, I don't have much faith in Harbaugh, but who I do have a lot of faith in is Will Muschamp. I will say that. I hated him when he was here. He should not be anywhere near a playbook. Like, if he even looks at a playbook, they need to burn that playbook because he looked at it. You know what I mean? But, you know, if, you know, but defensive coordinator wise, I, I, there's nobody in this country that I feel like a stronger defensive coordinator and a recruiter. Let's remember that Will Muschamp on defense at Florida was some of the best Florida defenses we've ever seen. You know, yeah. let, let, let's, let's be totally real when we say that. And, you know, so um, I, I don't understand what the hell, unless Vanderbilt and South Carolina are throwing up the white flag and just being like, okay, we're okay with sucking. I don't know where they're what they were thinking by getting rid of those two coaches. I, I really just I, I'm I'm baffled. And who they and they hired someone at South Carolina already. Somebody already got the job. I don't know who it is. Somebody already took uh, that position. Well, there, there you go, bro. You don't know who it is. Neither yeah. have I. So that uh, point taken. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think we know if it was somebody who was a coordinator from Notre Dame or somebody. One of these schools that's in the, was in the college football playoff. One of their coordinators okay. took the job at which, in that case, if you are a coordinator, you get that opportunity to become a head coach in college football. All means go for it. I mean, all means, yeah. you know, and you can change the program. And I, I, again, I'm not saying that, you know, <laughs> South Carolina is going to become an SEC East powerhouse anytime soon. But I'm just saying, no. you know, it's, it's a threat to the Gators, to Tennessee, to Georgia. If you can threaten the big guys for a little while and agitate them, then, yeah, it's sooner or later you're going to burst that bubble. Yeah. Kentucky exactly. Years ago. You know, I mean, you're going to burst that bubble sooner or later. Now, I don't see the yeah, Gators. And, 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 and let's be real. Let's be real. That Kentucky team wasn't better than the Gators. Uh, uh, you know what I'm saying? They just beat them. So it can always happen, brother. You know what I mean? Uh, think about it. Our national championship year uh, in 2006, it took us having a block, which I think is probably the closest to the loudest moment in Gator history. I mean, I, I – I, from what I understand, the Raptors were shaking when they blocked that kick. Um, so I, I, I personally remember it like it was yesterday. I honestly did not see the block. I was on my knees in front of my TV with my head in the dirt, <laughs> like would not watch it. <laughs> I said, you know, he can, they were like, he's 15 for 15 on the year with a long of 54. And this is a 32 yard kick. And I'm like, we're dead. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's over, you know, and I, I didn't even see it. And all I heard was the announcer. He blocked it. And like, I think I threw the TV and ran across the room and did a cartwheel. And, <laughs> you, know, you know, I don't know what I did, but uh, I just remember going haywire. You know? <laughs> what is, so. um, what's your opinion so far? I don't know if you got a chance to watch on our, on our basketball team this year. Uh, um, I'm going to be honest with you, man. Uh, they're, they're playing with a lot of heart right now. Um, yeah. Yeah. Ever since uh, Key went down. Um, that was, bro, I'm not going to lie. Uh, another little tear moment, dude, that was scary. Yeah. That was scary. Uh, I, I, I I'm going to be honest. I watched it over and over again. I did not think he was going to come out. I, I, I thought he, I, I thought we were seeing one of those situations where we were about to have a really sad day in Gator nation. Um, prayer is good. Uh, think, think everything, you know, I don't care what you believe in. Uh, think that you know that he was able to come back uh, I don't know what his career looks like I know that he's out for the rest of the season I know that the Gators made him a coach um you know like a player coach that's basically going to be working with the players uh we're talking about the SC we're talking about the preseason SEC player of the year um so that's going to be rough to have to replace man I think I I think we're playing well enough and with heart right now our team's really together 
um, that that situation it really affected our team. Um, a, you know, they they watched one of their brothers fall down and they didn't know if he was going to get up. Uh, I want to say this. I want to say this because this is on a Florida uh, talk show. And this is coming from a Gator fan that absolutely despises Florida State. But I want to say this as a Gator fan. Thank you, Florida State. Um, yeah, it, that man, that young man's life is saved because of the actions of the staff um, uh, from Florida State and the medical facility uh, up there in Tallahassee. Um, they took care of a Gator and they saved his life. And uh, I'm, you know, as a Gator fan, I can't do nothing but say, uh, you know, sometimes it's bigger than a game, man, and it's bigger than a rivalry. We're all here together. Um, it was great to see that, uh, you know, even our biggest rival could come out and care enough to save that young man's life. You know what I mean? So. I was just going to say, how weird of a year was it this year not to play them? <laughs> yeah. How weird of, I mean, oh, God. Not that they would have beat us. But they, 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 they would have. They would have. They would have canceled the game anyways. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I, you know, in all honesty, I, you know, I, again, I, I, I cover Florida State, and I have a lot of people that are Knowles fans, and I, you know, I asked them. I said, you know, straight up, I said, you're, you're not going to get rid of Coach Norvell after one year. The guy did. I, I love. I'm glad he's gone because he. Memphis killed USF. So I'm happy he's out of the AAC. He's in the, you know, now he's in the ACC. But I'm just saying, you got to give that guy a chance. You have to give him a chance to Bro, get let that me, team let me, back. Let me say this. Let me say this. And this is, I'm going to put my troll side of me. You, you know, I talk a lot of trash to different fan bases. Right. So I'm going to put that up for your show. And I'm just going to give you my honest opinion right now. I think that okay. Florida State was too trigger happy with tr Taggart. Um, I yep. really do. I I'm, I'm sorry, but Florida State has won four games since they fired Taggart. And you still want to yeah. tell me Taggart was the problem? Because yeah. I, I I mean, let's let's be real now. Let, let, let's be total real. They, they've won four games and, 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 and I barely, you barely won against them. You, you can hang your hat on that North Carolina win if you want to, but North Carolina beat themselves on that game. There's no reason North Carolina yeah. should have lost that game. We saw that North Carolina was a really good football team this year. They take, they took Texas A&M down to the wire, dude. They did. Um, so, uh, it, it, that win should not – you should be more disappointed in North Carolina than happy. That's kind of like saying, oh, LSU has a good football team because they beat Florida. Come on. Right. You know, <laughs> that was more Florida's screw-up than it was LSU's win. Right. You know what I mean? So, um, we'll just – we'll just have to see, man. Yeah. I don't know. I, yeah, no, I mean – I, I think right now, you know, out of this, out of, and then if you throw Miami into that mix, Manny Diaz has that. Now again, King obviously, God rest his soul, he got he got an ACL injury in their loss. You know, yeah. You know, if he comes back, bro, I'll tell you like this. I'll tell you like this. I think if you're a Miami fan right now, I think you should be happy where your program is. Okay. I too. really do. They won a they won a bunch of recruiting battles. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. I'll say this right now. Uh, I wanted that Taylor kid, that defensive tackle uh, Taylor from the Palmetto Five. I wanted him, uh, and Miami out recruited us. And let's not forget about Avante Samuel. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. That situation still pisses me off. Uh, you know, he he that kid played the Gators. I don't care what anybody damn says. We had. You know, people taking care of his family. We have people taking care of him when he didn't have a place to go and all of this stuff. And I'll be honest with you, man, you get an opportunity. Dude, the smartest thing that the University of Miami did ever was bring Ed Reed onto that staff. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yep. They won the Avante Samuels. They won the Avante Samuels recruiting battle because of it. Uh, when you have the opportunity, if you're a young safety, and you grew up, who did you watch at that safety position? Ed Reed. It was Ed Reed. <laughs> I mean, uh, or maybe a Troy Palomalo, maybe. Right. You know, you, you, you would say that. But honestly, it was Ed Reed. I mean, dude, my old lady, when we first got together, she started watching football. And I was watching the NFL 
goes, you know, she was like, oh, you know, I, I want to watch the NFL, but I don't know who to watch. Mm-hmm. It, it, it was funny because there was a throw into the back of the end zone. Ed Reed intercepted it in the back of the end zone. And he took it all the way back 106 yards. It was the first play of the NFL that my wife had ever watched. She said, that's my favorite player and that's my favorite team. So that's the sort of player Ed Reed was. You know what I mean? It's like he could make thing for them uh for them to be able to is turning the corner and i feel like fsu needs to really be worried because we already got florida playing really good and recruiting well you've got miami recruiting well florida states i mean dude if they want to recover in the next five six years they better do something yeah, no, yeah, I, I, I agree. I mean, that's, you know, I I, my, I have um, my boss at work is both his kids went to Florida State. And, okay. you know, he, I, I've asked him, I said, you know, it hasn't been very great in Tallahassee. I mean, it has not been good in Tallahassee the last two years, three years. And I said, you know, what is, I mean, again, you know, they're, they go back you know, to the Bobby Bowden days and all that. And, you know, they're, you know, those days to me as a Gator fan, you know, I don't want to go back to because I remember the choke at doke uh, You get reminded of that all the time. No yeah. fans seem to bring that out. Every time you, you say something, oh, remember you guys were up by that many points and Warwick Dunn went, yeah, I remember Warwick Dunn going, you know, yeah. doing what he did. I used to despise that guy. Yeah. There, there's never been a better guy that you hated. You know what I mean? Because as a person, he is yeah. like one of the best people that you'll yes. ever meet in your entire life. Like, I mean, he is, you can't say one bad thing about that guy as a person, but right. man, I hated that guy. I was yeah. like, well, somebody tackle that little, yeah. you know, bleep it and bleep, bleep, bleep. <laughs> you know, because I mean, I hated that dude because he was so good. <laughs> Well, Him and another, Peter Ward. Him and Peter Ward. I hated that guy so Charlie bad. Ward, Charlie Ward. Another guy, Charlie Ward, who we always forget about too. I mean, it's like Jesus. Yeah. That those yeah. three, Warwick, you know, Dunn, and you know, it's it's just you know, it, it's just irate that. I'll tell you another one that I hated. That old fucker Winky. You know, that man's walking around with a damn crutch throwing touchdown passes to people. I mean, I hated that guy. I'm like, well, somebody in this old dude, you know what I mean? But it is what it is, man. Hey, um, I'll say this. Even as a Gator fan that loves to see FSU do bad, uh, I would really like to see FSU pick it back up, man. Uh, (laughs) There's nothing like uh, Saturday, you know, right after Thanksgiving, where you got two Florida teams in the top 10 battling it out that absolutely despise each other, yes. you know, because I hate to tell you, but these one-sided victories, they, they, they take away from the robbery. You know what I mean? Because you right. know that, yeah, they still hate each other, but it's like, the, it, it's just not there. You know, it takes away from that. So I would really lo- love to see the nineties, you know, early two thousands come back where, you know, the Miami, Florida, Florida State. I don't know if you know this, man, but there was a 14-year period of time that those three teams finished in the top 15. Oh, you I know see. What I mean? Yeah, I did not know. I, I mean, literal, uh, the national championship came through the state of Florida for like 10 years, man. Yeah. And, 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 and I was – like, it used to be – state of Florida versus everyone. Like it it was, that's how it was like, and, and the swagger was like that. And it was, you know, yeah, we hated each other, but we hated everybody else worse. You know what I mean? Yeah. You you know, yeah, we wanted to hate each other, but at the same time, it was us versus everybody, you know? And uh, I kind of miss that mentality. Uh, I do understand that recruiting has changed a lot, you know, uh, over the years, because, you know, now, Kids are being seen, you know, you can jump on the Internet and see a kid in California right now where you wouldn't even have known his name 15 years ago. You know what I'm saying? So I do understand that, but I I really don't understand why all three Florida teams are not being able to lock in home school. I'm tired of Alabama coming in and grabbing Florida products. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, yeah, it's you. 
you hate to see recruits go to the Alabamas, the Clemsons, the you know the Ohio State stuff like that. You you definitely do hate to see Florida kids leave the state when you have you know again and there are UCF fans that listen to this show, so that you got to include them in this mix because they believe that they belong, that they should be considered one of the teams that everyone should fear. The thing I, I'll say, I'll say this, I'll say this, dude. Uh, I would have believed that hype two, three years ago. Um, I think they've taken a little bit of a step back now. Yes. Um, uh, hopefully for their sake, uh, because dude, let's, let's remember UCF's got Disney backing them. And they've got that little bounce house thing. They got a cool little swag going for them. You know, uh, I can't help but, you know, always look at them as a little brother, but they're starting to get a little bit of an identity. Um, so I just hope that they don't fall off for too long because they, they need to keep going, bro. They, they, they really do. They, they can't barely get through that conference. Like, and until, until uh, they move up in conference, nobody's ever going to take them seriously. I mean, let's be real. I was just going to say that, and I hate them because they're USF's rival, but that's the whole different story. You know, the Warren I-4 between Tampa and Orlando. But, I mean, yeah. it, it, it comes, you know, um, you know, yes, until USF and UCF or whoever else is in the conference moves out of the AAC and goes to one of the Power Five, you're not going to do that. The problem with that is, as we all both know, and as most people know, it all comes down to the mighty dollar. They're not going to bring you in the conference unless they profit off of you coming into the conference. Right now, yeah. USF and UCF have no monetary gain for an SEC, for a Big 12, because actually a while back, I think about two or three years ago, USF and UCF both were going to the Big 12. It was, it was yeah. a deal, sign on the line, and then at the last minute, the Big 12 said, nope, we don't want to yeah. – We don't bring anyone new in the conference right now and the deal fell under and since then they you know they're in the AAC again that the conference has been dominated by Memphis over the past few years uh this year Tulsa was in I think Tulsa won the conference this year so again there it, it, it comes down to you know you're not I mean be- I hate to say this because I know that you're probably gonna you're probably not gonna like it but I hate to say this, but I think that UCF probably is a little bit more ahead of USF at this point. Oh, no. Just because yeah. probably with the backing of Disney, I would yeah. say when you're talking money-wise, yeah. I think UCF probably is up there. What, In your opinion, what does USF have to do to turn that corner for them to be able to get the, the money the 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 student facilities the stuff like that and so I'm I'm not saying the football program per 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 se but what does the athletic department have to do for them to be able to turn that corner? Well, I mean, right now, and I'll be we'll be I get an honor to interview him tomorrow night. Michael Kelly is the athletic director. He's the right man. He's steering the wheel in the right direction. The thing that the football program is missing right now is an indoor practice facility. I think the Oregon, I think the university is like $2 million short. And they've been, again, when, when the group that we are, we're in together, the F, FU.U.ST group, you guys consistently ask me all the time is when is USF going to get their own stadium? This is why I don't think it's ever going to happen. They make too much money for Raymond James Stadium. Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Glazers are not going to let that get out of there because that's money and revenue they're making for that stadium. Now, I know USF also gets, you know, backing from them as well. But hands down, there's no way the Glazers are going to go, yeah, we're going to let you walk away. No, that's not going to happen. Right. The and, of- and, and let me ask you this. I mean, are, are do you really think that they do make a lot of money off of that? I mean, honestly? It, it depends. See, like this year, well, obviously, let's take well, COVID. Yeah, nobody made money this year, unfortunately. Yeah. But let's take yeah. COVID out of the equation. When this team under, under, um, oh, now I can't think of his name. Jim Levitt. Under Jim okay. Levitt, this team okay. was, they were selling games out. It, Raymond James Stadium was sold now, out. Now, that was basically like, was that upper deck too? Because I remember when I went to the USF games, they never even opened up the upper deck. It was just, you know, lower yeah. deck. 
Yeah, this was Upper Deck. This was during the, the, the inaugural, the first few years when Levitt was coach. And they, you know, they sold out a lot of games, even in the Upper Deck. Now, yes, you're right. The only time I saw Upper Deck seats this year is because of COVID. They played UCF and they put people up in the third level to space people out. But other than okay. that, I think you would have seen if it was a normal, if it was a normal year, then there would have been that, that there there would have been more UCF fans, I think, coming from Orlando anyway. When I was right. there for the Outback Bowl last year, I was very shocked to see Minnesota and Auburn were here playing in that game. And we could talk about that. It's a Florida uh, football event. So yeah. they were here. And again, being an SEC guy, I think, all right, Auburn's going to travel well. They're coming from Alabama. Not far away. I don't know, five, six hour drive away from Alabama. I don't know how far Auburn is from, from Tampa. But I'm just saying it can't be that far away. And I was shocked to see that Minnesota fans were up like three fans to one. Minnesota. Wow travels very very well wow that yeah, and, me and let me ask you this just a, just a personal question because he came from a georgia area that i was close to how good is that rashad bateman kid pretty good yeah 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 yeah, uh, I've I've been I've been quietly rooting for him, man. I kind of know his story. He was from the area. Uh, really good kid, man. I'm 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 hoping big things for him in the NFL. Yeah, it, see, and and like I said, I got to see Tyler Johnson, who now plays for the Buccaneers. Uh, you know, so it was it was interesting to see. But again, that I've never seen Raymond James in that packed. Now I, I should yeah. say that because I was here, I was there for the Gator Michigan game. When Michigan absolutely rolled us, that was uh, Rex Grossman's, I think, last game under Ron Zook, who is another coach that a lot of Gator fans don't like either. Um, hey, bro, I'm going to be real. I'll be that one Gator fan that uh, will stand here and say that I have a lot of respect for Ron Zook. Okay. Uh, I think we, we kind of freaked out a little bit too soon. Uh, he's another one of those guys that's kind of like Will Muschamp. Uh, doesn't yeah. need to be around an offensive playbook. Uh, right. Really? To be t <laughs> total honest with you, I don't think he needs to be around a defensive playbook either. But he's one hell of a recruiter. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I, I'll tell you that we won our 06 championship because of the recruits he got us. You know, right. so um, uh, you can't say too much about him. The players loved him, dude. I mean, yeah. uh, the, he was a player's coach all the way. And I think that's one of his downsides. I think that was one of his downfalls um, was that he was definitely a player's coach. He cared about the players. Uh, he stuck with people that he shouldn't have stuck with. Uh, you know, that, that very talented roster. Uh, but he was a very loyal coach to his players. Uh, so I think that kind of did him at the end. Well, Phil, I, I, I'm going to jump off here, man, but I do, you're always welcome to come on here. Yeah, fun. man, it was it was fun. I'm sorry that I've been working so much lately and uh, haven't been around, but uh, I, it was really good to talk to you. It was very it was very entertaining. And, uh, I, I, dude, once again, I, I just want to tell you how proud I am of you, man. I, I remember when all this started, you know, a couple of years ago, and, you know, you were, you were debating with yourself whether you were really going to keep doing this or not. And, you know, uh, I remember just kind of throwing some words of encouragement your way. And, and, and next thing you knew, you know, you were messaging me, telling me about, how, you know, this and that. And next thing you know, you know, you're on a sideline doing what you love, brother. And so yeah. I'm very proud of you. Uh, I want I want, I just want to say that. And, and uh, go Gators, keep it going. Hashtag get Bradley in the swamp. We need to make it happen, man. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, brother, I, you know, I, I appreciate the words. You know, I, when you doubt yourself and now, you know, two year and a half later, I'm on three shows and I'm still writing and everything's moving in the right direction. Sometimes the word that I'm going to use this year, too, I used humble in 2021. In 2021, the word I'm going to use is grind. I'm going to grind, keep grinding and doing what I'm doing and, and you know, see where it goes because the the ceiling is up and it's, you know, I'm far from reaching it. So uh, just remember be this, man. And the time. Just remember this. You are one of the very few people on this earth that is actually doing what you love. OK. Yeah. Like, exactly. you know, so so just.
sit, sit back and, and take a second to think about how far you've come. And uh, I, I can't wait to see uh, if you go even further, man. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I have a, a, a local roller, women's roller derby league that is starting back up, and I've already been tagged their play-by-play -play person. So I'm looking very forward to that because uh, that's yeah. the dream job. That's the dream job, I think, of anybody uh, is the play-by-play. I mean, again, I'm not a Mick Hubert. I'm not a Jim Lau. I'm not, you know, a, a Gene Decker <laughs> by any means of the imagination. But I hey. mean, they're they're a great way. They great started way. somewhere. They started somewhere too, brother. Yep. Keep, keep keep striving and keep striving. I want to hear you as the voice of the Bulls one day, man. <laughs> I, that that would be a great job. I, I would not mind that at all. I would not mind that at all. Uh, that would well, be keep, yep. All right. Well, twenty twenty one. Keep grinding, brother. You have a good day. Okay. You have a good night. Go Gators. Go Gators. Yep. Have a good one, buddy. Thank you. All right. Bye bye. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead. Uh, it is 1030. <laughs> My show is two hours long. Um, I didn't get to talk about Rays. Uh, I didn't get to talk about hockey. So, guys, I'm going to go ahead and fast forward that to next week. So the hockey season will be two days away from starting up, so I'm going to leave that hockey news for then. Um, I'll get back to the Rays and everything. I didn't get to talk about a lot of college basketball. I'll get back to that next week, too. I do appreciate, again, Shane. And Phil, both being my first interviews on the same night on my show, that has been great. Thank you, guys. I hope in the future I can get more people on here. Uh, that's, again, the word I'm going to use, guys, is grind. I'm going to try to grind and keep grinding out to get people on the show. But, again, this has been the Sunshine State Sports Jabber, part of NGSC Sports. Remember the website, guys. It's NGSCSports.com for all your current sports content. And I am sponsored by Arena Eats. Log on to the website, arenaeats.app, for the ultimate fan experience at your favorite sports venue, Arena Eats mobile app. Pre-order, express pickup, and in-seat delivery. How do you place your order? And as I always do, guys, before I go, I want to thank all of the uh, essential workers, the nurses, the doctors, frontline guys, frontline personnel. Thank you. You guys are getting your vaccine as we speak, as you damn well deserve it. Uh, thank you for being the true heroes uh, starting last year in, in, in March, moving forward. Again, also to the, uh, our military, our armed forces, both the men and women, both uh, both active, retired, and the ones who have left us. Thank you for your sacrifice. I would not be able to talk and do these three shows I do a week without your sacrifice. You guys are awesome. Thank you. Uh, and again, with the holiday season, you got to spend time away from your family that, you know, to you know, just thank you for doing what you do, the sacrifice that you have. To our domestic soldiers, our police officers, firefighters, and paramedics, thank you for keeping us safe here domestically. And as always, guys, thank you for coming on here, either for just a second. Again, this show will be in its entirety on YouTube. If you didn't get a chance to watch it, it will be put on YouTube. I'm probably going to put it up there tomorrow because I got to get up early for work in the morning. So, guys, again, thank you. I love all of you guys. This is the first uh, Sunshine State Sports Chat of 2021. And I would be glad to look back, you know, 11 months from now, the last show, and look back at this one and see how far I've come moving forward. But I want to say thank you to everyone who has been there since day one with me and helped me through this. Phil was one of those guys behind the scenes, guys that would give me motivate, keep me motivated. Uh, Ralph Garcia, he, you know who he is, uh, the guy that runs this program, runs the, runs the network. You know, he's another one that's been pushing me in the right direction, guys. Um, so again, guys, I love you. And this has been Sunshine State Sports Ever. I am the sports nerd, Brad Walker. I will see you next Monday for this show. I'll be on Bullseye tomorrow night with Larry Frank interviewing Michael Kelly. Can't wait for that. And I'm back with my two brothers, Lewis and Adam on the Walker Report coming up this Thursday, 8 p.m. on In The Zone Sports Radio. Come over there, guys, if you like being over here. Until then, guys. Everyone, stay safe out there. Wear your mask. Let's get this COVID stuff under control. We don't go into lockdown. Let's get this under control so we can all get back to some normal life. And until then, guys, peace.